today our topic of discussion is the guest relation which is the very easiest topic right so let's come over here as we have discussed in the last lecture that we have a bilaminar laminar layer and that is called the epiblast cells and the hypoblast cells we have discussed in our last lecture right so the cells which are on the upper surface are called the epiblast cells and the cells which are on the lower surface and these cells are called the hypoblast cells so we have a bilaminar layer of epiblast cells and the hypoblast cells right so if we come over here in a three dimension image you can see the three dimension image over here so the circles the cells which are in the uh, black marker are called the epiblast cells and the cells the layer which is in the green marker is called the hypoblasts and this is the 3d image is a three dimensional image right so let's come again over here give the thickening of these epiblast cells right i am talking about these epiblast cells due to the thickening of these epiblast cells the two different structures are formed and that structures are primitive streak and primitive node right so due to the thickening of this epiblast cells i am talking about the upper layer right the epiblast due to the thickening of the epiblast layer of the epiblast cells the two different structures are formed and that are called the primitive streak the first structure is called the primitive streak right so this flat surface this streak like structure on the surface of the epiblast layer this structure this structure this streak like structure is called the primitive streak and the primitive streak is formed due to the thickening of the epiblast cells and due to the epiblast cells due to the thickening of the epiblast cells a new structure is formed which is a swollen structures which is a knob like structures these structures this is called the primitive node so due to the thickening of the epiblast cells the two structures are formed and the streak like structure is called the primitive streak right and due to the thickening of the epiblast cells a swollen or knob like structures a knob like structure is called the primitive node right now let's come over here in this figure in this figure as you can see this structure is primitive streak and this structure is the primitive node now the cells the cells in this primitive streak and the cells in this primitive node will go deeper inside right the cells i'm talking about the cells of the primitive streak and the primitive node the cells or the tissues which are residing in the primitive node and primitive streak they will go deeper inside right and make a digging area over here and now after the digging of the primitive node and the primitive streak now the primitive node will go deeper inside right now the primitive streak the cells over here the tissues over here will go deeper inside and after the digging of the primitive node and primitive streak now they have a different name after the digging of these two structures right and now after the digging after the cells of the primitive node and primitive streak will go deeper now the primitive node is called primitive pit right and now the primitive streak will look like a groove right after the digging the primitive streak will look like a groove so we called it the primitive groove so after the thickening thickening of the epiblast cells we made two different structures we formed two different structures primitive streak and primitive node right so the cells in the primitive node and primitive streak will go deeper inside and when they go deeper inside the primitive streak will convert into primitive groove and primitive node will convert into primitive pit right so now Let's come over here. As you can see, 
This is our epiblast. This layer is the epiblast cells. And right now, the cells of the epiblast are tightly bounded with each other. Right? They have very strong bonding right now. Right? So, these epiblast cells will release some growth factors. So, this lecture is about the releasing of the growth factors. This is the story of the growth factors, you can say. Right? So, these epiblast cells will release some growth factors. And the most important growth factor, there is many growth factors, but the most important is the fibroblast. So, these epiblast cells will release the growth factors, and these growth factors are called the fibroblasts. The specialized fibroblast growth factors which are released by the epi epiblast cells. Right? So, when they release the growth factor, the fibroblasts, now the epiblasts which were the tightly bounded with each other, they will go separate from each other now. Right? I have told you earlier that the, the epiblast cells are tightly bounded with each other but after the releasing, after the removal of the growth factors which are fibroblasts, after the, after the releasing of the fibroblast cells these fibers, these epiblast cells now go separate from each other and after the separation of these epiblast cells they will go migrate because they are free now and when the epiblasts are free Okay, so they can freely migrate from their place, right? So, these epiblast cells, after the separation, they will move through the primitive group, right? These epiblast cells, after releasing the growth factor phytoblast, they will go in the primitive group, right? As in, or you can say the epiblast cells which are residing near the primitive groove here you can see they will go deeper inside right and when they go deeper inside I am talking about epiblast cells the epiblast cells will go through the primitive groove and when they go through the primitive groove but not through the primitive pit the epiblast cells right now they will go through the primitive groove not through the primitive pit Right? I will tell you the, I will tell you the reason later. So the epiblast cells which are free now, which are not tightly bounded after the releasing of the growth factors fibroblasts, they will go deeper in the primitive groove and they will move over here. In the region of the hypoblast cells. Right? When they reach in, when they rush in, the hypoblast cells they will replace the hypoblast cells, right? The epiblast cells will go in the primitive groove and after passing through the primitive groove, they will replace these cells which are hypoblasts. And when they replace the hypoblast cells, a new structure or you can say a new layer is formed and that new layer is called the endoderm, right? So, the epiblast cell will go in deeper in the primitive groove and they replace the hypoblast cells and due to the replacement of the hypoblast cells through the epiblast cells a new layer is formed and that layer and that new layer is called the endoderm right so we have after the separation of these epiblast cells now these epiblast cells has converted into the ectoderm right which is the first germinal layer and the cells of the epiblast which will go deeper inside to the primitive groove they will replace these hypoblast cells and now the replacement of these hypoblast cells will make a new layer and that layer is called the final or the last layer of the germinal layers and that is called the endoderm if you can zoom over here we have made two different layers we have made two different germinal layers the epiblasts and the you can say hypoblasts and these epiblasts and hypoblasts are now converted into the ectoderm and the endoderm and now let's make an other and the final germinal layer that is called the mesoderm right so 
as you can see in this figure we have the ectoderm and we have the endoderm so the ectoderm over here as you can see in the black marker in the three dimensional image these ectoderm will keep on releasing the growth factors as i told you that this story is all about the releasing of the growth factors so these ectoderm cells now we have to germinal layers right we are going to make the third one we have three two germinal layers the first one is ectoderm and the second one is endoderm right so this ectoderm is keep on releasing keep on releasing the growth factors right so ectoderm will release different growth factors and these growth factors will move in this region but i am again telling you the cells due to the releasement of the growth factors which are released by the ectodermal cells now the ectodermal cells will move through this primitive groove right through the primitive groove i am talking over and over again the cells of the ectoderm will move through the primitive groove not through the primitive pit right keep it in mind that the ectodermal cells which are released are moving through the primitive groove not by the primitive pit right so now the ectodermal cells will move in this primitive if you can zoom over here the ectodermal cells will move through this primitive groove and they will go down they will go in the temporal side and they will go in the posterior side try to understand that the ectodermal cells which are released some growth factors the fibroblasts and the ectodermal cells which are free now they will move deeper inside in the primitive groove they will go down in the primitive groove they will go in the lateral side right and they will go posterior side so this phenomena will make another structure this phenomena will make an other layer and that is called a uh, Mizo done. So here we go. We have made our three different layers. Our three different layers. We have converted the bilaminar layer into the trilaminar layer, right? So the trilaminar layer is called. This is called the layer in the black marker is called the mesoderm, and the last one is called the endoderm. And the very first one is called the one and only ectoderm. So we will repeat in just a second. In a minute, you can say we have two different cells: the epiblast cells, the upper layer, and the hypoblast cells, the lower layer. Right. So due to the thickening of these epiblast cells, the two different structures are formed. First one is called primitive streak, and the swollen structure, the knob-like structure, is called the primitive node. Now. These high epiblast cells. I am talking about these epiblast cells. These epiblast cells will release some growth factors, and these growth factors are called the fibroblasts, the specialized fibroblast growth factors, right? So after the release of the growth factors, the epiblast cells, which were tightly bounded with each other, they will go separate. And when they will go separate, they will migrate, and they will migrate through this primitive groove, right? They will they will migrate through this primitive groove, and they will go deeper inside. and they will replace these hypoblast cells and now a new layer is formed and that layer is called the endoderm right and this epiblast cells which convert into the ectoderm now the ectodermal cells will keep on releasing the growth factors right and due to the release of the growth factors through the epiblast cell through the ectodermal cells the cells of the ectoderm will go deeper inside through this primitive groove not through the primitive pit right and they will go through the primitive groove and they go down they will go temporally and they will go posteriorly and they form a new layer over here and that is called the mesoderm so we have ectoderm we have mesoderm and we have endoderm so the formation of these three germinal layers is called the gastrulation 
So this is very easiest as you can see. So in our let's have a break of five minutes. In the next lecture, we will discuss our further details.